So, uh, welcome everyone today. Uh, I will be talking about um, augmented and virtual reality and what are actually the target groups that we as YouGov can identify that are suitable for augmented and virtual reality to give you a little bit of insights from the vast amount of insights that we can share with our clients, our partners and so on. Um, and also to help you and brands and agencies to go through these times of changes and a lot of technological innovation that's there and give you a little bit of a guidance um, how you can embrace this innovation and then also um, how you can take advantage of it. Uh, because we are starting this uh, presentation with a, a small quote from Jack Walsh, who was the CEO of GE, and he said, actually, there's just two sources of competitive advantage. It's the ability to learn more about your customer faster than your competition and the ability to turn that into action faster than your competition. And this is what we want to enable you with um, today. Because actually we believe that adaptation or transformation to new things, to innovation, is nothing new in our industry or in the agency industry or in the marketing world overall. If you look at how marketing has transformed from its very beginning uh, throughout the years, and the, it's more than 100 years if I roughly look at it, uh, then that's, that's quite a lot. You see that marketing was born... Um, more than a hundred years ago and then it was just about how can you create a good faster than your competitors and push it in the market as fast and as efficient as possible. It evolved through what was called the sales pitch, so convincing people that they should actually buy your product and not the product of your competitor. Then this thing called market research came in and people were starting to wonder why is the consumer actually doing all those things? Why is he behaving the way he does and how can we use these insights to then again convince the consumer uh, to buy uh, what we have produced or to, to take the service that we are providing him with? And then all these other things came up, what we know today as relationship marketing, so building a long term and not just a so uh, short-term uh, relationship with your clients, putting the consumer really first in everything you do. And then also um, the rise of digital marketing really helps companies to embrace all of this. But if you look at the last three stages especially, you can see that with the rise of data and technology, uh, the pace of all these changes and then the, the evolution of the business that we are working in has increased in pace a lot. And therefore, we have to be even more looking at what's happening and looking at what the consumers are doing and what they are looking for. What are their needs? What are their wishes? Uh, and therefore, we came up with three innovation trends that we thought would impact uh, marketing in 2018. This is part of a presentation that started to evolve the beginning of this year and actually at the conferences that I've witnessed um, many of those things that I'll present you now have actually turned out to be very true and that were uh, kind of the common topic throughout a lot of discussions that we had at conferences or with our clients. So what we see in the marketing or also in the market research business is that there are a lot of new ways and I think we've talked about that in the last couple of days uh, a little bit as well, that there are new ways of data collection and new uh, ways of then transforming the data that will uh, actually allow us and brands and agencies uh, to get a deeper understanding of what the consumer actually wants, what are consumer journeys, why is he choosing the way he chooses, uh, why is he not choosing something that we actually thought he, he should choose. Um, and that then enables um, many brands to uh, really personalize any customer experience that, that their company uh, yeah, con consumers would have, and that is done by the help of AI, uh, and that's something that we are witnessing in, in many different forms of businesses. Um, that also goes a lot further, uh, because people will then try and find ways for consumers to really enhance the experience, personalize the experience. When you go on a website, one person will not see what the other person sees anymore, but they get individual personalized experience, and thereby advertising or any other content that a brand publishes is often not seen as advertising anymore but as a valuable source of information that this brand provides its, its consumers with. 
And then last but not least, and that's what we'll focus uh, on for my presentation today, there's a lot of technical innovations um, that will enhance the ability of, of companies to create really personal customer experiences. And actually in the case of VR and AR, you will enable your consumers to experience your brand or the service even before people actually go to the hotel or buy the car or buy the new piece of furniture. Um, to really experience it in, in their home. And in order to do that, uh, what, what we see uh, with a lot of brands is that in order to win in the future, that actually requires a little bit of a shift in thinking because it's not about gathering data for a certain media channel or for a certain campaign. It's about gathering data around people, organizing about the consumers, around the target groups that they have, and thereby um, give the consumer what they want, what they need, what they look for because uh, before they actually can think of it themselves. And this again then requires companies to be as flexible and agile as possible uh, because they need to respond to what we said earlier, these fast changing consumer behaviors and need to be able to react faster and quicker than their competition. So actually, this all boils down to that the consumer, in the end, is the most important asset that you guys and brands and agencies um, have as an organization because this is the source where all the innovation, all the growth of a brand comes from because they need to fulfill the needs and wishes that actual people have. And this is where we, as you go, for example, can come in with the data, but that's also, of course, other approaches um, that you can take, but our approach is one of them, um, tackling that challenge with the existing data that we as a global technology innovation data and analytics company have, sourcing data from our more than six million people who participate in our surveys uh, worldwide and utilizing that continuous stream of data that we can provide our consumers with. Because what we believe in is not the world of big data, it's the world of connected data, connecting different sources, to connecting different pieces of information and making them available on a continuous basis because brands need answers now and not tomorrow or in three weeks when the research project is done. Because this approach of, of connected data and having data available all the time through this continuous stream allows brands to be really integrated base their campaign planning, base their brand planning throughout the whole process on one piece of data, be more innovative than the others, and also be truly dynamic in responding to that ever-changing market. Uh, and what we do in order to enable that sort of connected data approach um, is what we call the YouGov cube. It's a little metaphor. Uh, that says all of our data is going into that one data vault, which is yeah, more or less three-dimensional. You see there is uh, the data that we collect from our panelists. There is these six million panelists on the other dimension. And we've collected this data not since yesterday, but over the last couple of years. So there's also a time aspect in this sort of data that we are collecting. And we are connecting all sorts of different uh, data. So, of course, we have demographic data, lifestyle data, uh, and I think it was nice what was said earlier today. We are also looking beyond the demographics, looking at attitudinal data, looking at opinions and psychographics that are actually more relevant to describe um, how a target group looks like today. We have a lot of data on brand usage and perception, and of course, all sorts of information on how are these people then using media because it's nice to describe your target group but in the second step you also want to reach them and you want to know how and where and how often you need to do that. So that's the, the approach that we, we provide our clients with. It's a single source connected data solution actually going throughout the whole campaign planning process. So what you can do with our data is to plan a campaign, identify, understand the audiences with a uh, great deal of depth. You can then actually take that data and these target groups to the digital space and advertise directly to them. And then also track, because we've done that over, over time, whether within these target groups um, your brand metrics have changed. 
This is what we do with our two main products, uh, Profiles and Brand Index. If you want to know more about it, you can read that in the paper or on our website. Because what I'm coming to next is the little case that I've uh, prepared for today's presentation. Uh, we use this data to actually tackle the, the, the topic that I uh, mentioned earlier. We want to understand how big is consumers' appetite actually for virtual uh, and augmented reality. And if you look on the next slide, you see that actually virtual uh, reality in the three market or four markets that we have looked at, um, the ownership of such a device is not very big yet. Um, it's not what, what has been promised uh, by many companies so far. Um, and also if you look then um, in the usage of uh, augmented reality apps in the next 12 uh, month, you see that the US is the market where it's the most promising looking at the moment, but looking at the UK and Germany, the numbers are still quite low, but maybe there is some room. Because actually, there are quite a few possible use cases for virtual and augmented reality. You can use it, for example, in the automotive business. There's a lot of companies who are using that technology to make uh, their consumers experience the car before they <coughs> decide for a color or for a different engine or all sorts of features that they want to add into their car. Uh, the fashion and retail business really allows people to try on new clothes, new outfits, uh, before they actually buy them, experience something at home. Um, the hospitality and tourism industry allows their clients to um, visit a hotel room before you actually go to the city. Um, Thomas Cook, for example, what they are doing at the moment is that you can actually see the individual room and book that one specific room before you actually go there and you would have experienced it with the help of an augmented reality or a virtual reality glass in the travel agency. So that's really exciting and enables um, the consumers to make better decisions. Also in the design and uh, interior industry you can see a lot of possible use cases with <coughs> people being able to place the furniture into their living room before they actually buy it and maybe figure out that it doesn't really fit and um, decide something else. Um, so there is a lot of people who can well imagine that AR and virtual reality um, allows people to experience a product or service before they actually buy them. You can see that, especially in Germany and the US, um, there's more than 50% of the people that say augmented reality, virtual reality, that is something that they could imagine to be useful. But if you look on the other hand, there's quite a lot of people in all of these markets as well that say they don't really see any practical applications of augmented or virtual reality. It's roughly 40% in all of these markets, so there's still a few skepticals out there. And you should bear that in mind if you are a brand and want to advertise or provide a product via those media. And actually, it gets even worse. There's people out there who don't really know about augmented or virtual reality, and they think it can actually cause health issues. So if you want to provide such a service as a brand, you should probably educate your audience a little bit on the new technology before throwing it at them. And what we have done uh, for today is to give brands a little bit of guidance and also show you a way how we work with our set of, of connected data. We've created um, a framework that allows you to understand um, new technology adoption. You can see that we have uh, the attitude of augmented reality is useful to people due to real-world application is on the one axis, and we have those people who are interested in trying new technology products, services, and app on the other axis. And actually, by just taking these two data points, you can already create different target groups in a very simple but efficient way because it allows you to see there are these different groups, it allows you to quantify these groups because with the data that you have, you can say this one group is bigger than the other and also connect it with your brand data to see whether your current target audience is more in one or the other of these groups. We've done exactly that. 
Uh, and what you can also see if you can then compare the different target groups that we have um, defined in this framework is that they behave differently over the different markets that we've looked at. Um, you can, for example, see that the most interesting target group that we call the augmented adventurers, so they are really into new technology and really see a use in these things, they are especially pronounced in Germany um, and in the US. Whereas if you look at those who are the utility finders, so those who, who like augmented reality, but are maybe a little bit, need a little bit of a more of a push in order to try something new, they are more pronounced in the UK and in the US. So you can use this data in order to quantify it and see what are the differences between the markets and how big are these different groups within my market at hand. Um, you can also do a little bit of a, of a market sizing that I did for the UK here. So you would see that actually within the UK market, 11.4 million people would already be in this interesting target group, the augmented adventurers. But on the other hand, you see also 9.7 million who we've called the skeptical laggards who are still quite yeah, skeptical when it comes to adopting new technology or um, even tr finding something like augmented or virtual reality useful. You can then, with the help of our connected data approach, go deeper into these audience and then understand these audience a lot, a lot better by looking at different attitudes. So it's also target groups that are very into technology, who like to use digital assistance, they like to use the internet. On the other hand, it's still, even though they are so tech savvy, a target group that likes to touch and feel products before they buy them. But maybe the augmented or virtual reality is one way to help them out of that dilemma. Um, the data also will show you that these, this is a target group that uses different digital assistants already. They are using different um, advertising channels. And of course, you can do the same procedure for other markets as well. So you can actually see that in the German market, the augmented adventure group is even bigger. It's also a bigger market, but also percentage wise, it was bigger than in the UK, as we saw before and then do the same thing. Look at this one specific target group and see how do they differ from the other markets? What do I have to do in my communication if I want to um, reach such a target audience for my product, for my campaign, whatever. Um, if you're, for example, an online fashion retailer, you can actually also see that 74% uh, of the German and 66 of the UK augmented adventurers uh, also believe that online shopping is uh, much more fun with augmented reality. So if you want to insist on that, that is something you can actually work with. And then you can again connect this data to a different data source and have a look at the brand tracking data that you have, that we have, um, and see how a brand that is actually already using augmented or virtual reality, in this case we looked at the fashion retailer Zara in, the, in Germany and in the UK, how this is then affecting things like impression, consideration or purchase intent. And in both markets you can see that actually within this target group they are doing very well, better than in the national average. And that um, actually these initiatives have proven very well for them. You can also have a look over time. We had a look at IKEA. Uh, they actually have apps that allow you to place the furniture into your living room or to your uh, kitchen um, before you can actually um, buy them. Um, they also have installations in their, um, in their shops. Um, where you can do all this and what you can see is that if you look at impression uh, and consideration, both metrics the within the target group of the augmented adventurers, IKEA is performing a lot better also over time. You see that the effect is a little bit declining. Maybe they should advertise or communicate a little bit more on that, but you can still clearly see a significant difference. So that 
uh, leads me to, to our conclusion. Uh, what we believe is that companies should embrace these new innovations. They are important things and they will develop our market and it's nothing to be scared of. But it also always has to happen in connection with truly understanding what the consumer wants if he or she is already ready for this new sort of innovation. Um, and then again, measure your efforts. Make sure to, that you evaluate whether what you've done is showing some impact on your brand. Because by doing all of this, you will also be able to build trust with your consumers because they will know you are a brand that is fulfilling their needs and wishes and is trying to be more relevant to them. That's my presentation. I think the questions are in the Q&A part after this session. Um.